can't they just leave me alone and let me do my own thing? It's not fair at all. Ugh. Is everything okay, Raquel? I was cleaning the bathrooms over there and... Come on, guys, I just cleaned those. Anyway, I heard you talking to yourself, loudly. Seems like you were frustrated about something. Was it the headbanging that gave it away? Well, it certainly helped. Seems like you might be in a up a creek without a paddle situation. A what? You know, a tough situation, a hard spot. You're in a pickle. Oh no, I'm not in a pickle. I'll tell you who's in a pickle. They're in a pickle because I'm not going. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not in a pickle. You're in a pickle, aren't you? I'm in a pickle! Okay, now tell me what's going on. So every day after our meals, I like to spend some time alone. And I don't mind it at all. In fact, I really enjoy it. A lot of times I'll go back to my cabin or play my guitar or climb a tree or something. Counselor Carl was looking at my camp schedule and said I needed to add in more fellowship time. You know, community. Important time with friends hanging out together. He said I should sign up for Bible study or worship night and try to make it to the weekend campfire parties or flashlight tag competitions. Those things are awesome! But I'm guessing you don't think so? Why do I need to do those things? I'm perfectly fine on my own. I still read the Bible. I still pray. I still worship God when I play praise songs on my guitar. Why is it so important that I do it with other people? That's a good question. I want you to go get a stick. Why? Just trust me. Go get a stick. Come on, hustle, hustle, hustle. Okay, now what? Now break it. That's easy. Super easy, but now, I'm going to give you a stick. Uh -huh. I'm going to tie this string around the middle. And as you go and gather more sticks, every time you pick up a stick, I want you to wrap this string around it so that they all stay gathered together. Okay, are you ready? I said, are you ready? Sir, yes sir! Okay, ready, set, go. I think I did pretty good. Look at all these sticks. That is awesome. Now, try to break them. Oh, I definitely got this. Did you know last year I was the tug of war champion? Undefeated. I took on the whole raccoon cabin all by myself. They don't call me roadkill Raquel for nothing. All right, then what are you waiting for? Use that super strength and break those sticks. All right, stand back. We don't want you to get a splint in your eye. Here I go. Go roadkill! Hold on. Just warming up. Come on, you stinking sticks! Why are you so hard to break? Come on! Okay, 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 that's enough. Man, that bundle was unbreakable. I don't understand. It was just a pile of sticks. Well, when we do life alone, instead of doing it together, we're like that first stick that you broke. Did it take a lot to break it? No, I didn't even have to use these guns. I could basically snap them with my pinkies. Well, the string is like the Holy Spirit and the sticks are people. As followers of Christ, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us and we need to be gathered together with other believers or we can easily be tricked by God's enemy and our enemy, Satan. It's easier for us to believe Satan's lies or to be filled with fear, to be selfish, or even to be stuck in sin. We need to be gathered together with other Christ followers to help us or we will break so easily. Yikes. But what happened when you gathered the other sticks and you tied them together? 
I couldn't break any of them, not even one. Exactly. Gathering together with other Christ followers means that we have other people in our lives to teach us the truth about who we are and who God is. Being around other people who love God and love us helps us because then they can be praying for us and encouraging us to obey God. And on top of that, they can even help us do what God wants us to do. Okay, I think I get it now. It's important to be with other Christ followers so that we don't have to go through things alone and so that we can help each other grow closer to God. You know, I'm really excited to sign up for Bible study. And I think I'll try to make it to one of those tug of war competitions on Saturday. But this time, I think I'll see if anybody wants to join my team. Roadkill Raquel is back in business. That's great. Miss Roadkill, why don't we start by going down and hanging out with your cabin mates at the lake? Can we grab a pickle on the way? <laughs> yes, we can grab a pickle. Mmm, pickles! You know what? I think I'm gonna have to wait a little bit before I get to eat this thing. You guys aren't here to watch me eat a pickle anyway. Let's take a look at the verse from Hebrews chapter 10. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together. That's Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and the very first part of 25. Let's not neglect meeting together, 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 together. Do you guys know what that means? It means we shouldn't forget about or choose not to meet with other Christ followers. God calls us to gather, and that means to get together with one another. Okay, so you might remember that after Jesus went back to heaven, someone came to dwell or live with God's children. Do you remember what, or rather who, it was? That's right. God's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moved powerfully through Jesus' followers. They were teaching others about God's love, and more and more people were choosing to follow Jesus with their lives. When the Holy Spirit came upon the people, as described in Acts chapter 2, there were over 3,000 people who decided to follow Jesus right then. Isn't that awesome? It is awesome! But what happened after that is important as well. Listen to this from the book of Acts, chapter 2. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Acts 2, 42 through 47. What were these followers of Jesus doing together? They were doing just about everything together. They were gathering together to eat. They were gathering together to pray. They were gathering to learn about God and even gathering to serve God together. And as they were doing these things, what was happening? Were people deciding, nah, I don't really like this, I'm out of here. Or were people being added to God's kingdom? That's right, verse 47 says more people were being saved. Gathering together with people who follow Jesus can lead to others choosing to follow Jesus with their own lives as well. When we obey God by choosing to gather together in His name, it will motivate or help us to do good things for God and to show God's love to the world. Gathering together helps us grow even stronger in everything God has called us to do. And as we do this, God's kingdom will grow. Does God tell us to gather? Yes, God calls us to gather. If you are a child of God because you have made the choice to follow Jesus with your life, then you can be looking for ways to gather with other people to learn more about God together, serve other people together, do life together. 
It's a wonderful thing. Speaking of wonderful things, where did that pickle go? Ah! Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to go get a fresh gherkin to munch on. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Konnichiwa. Listen to this. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. What I have here is a single string connected to a dowel rod. On the other end of the string is a heavy weight. Now, as I wind up the string, it will begin to tighten and it will eventually try to lift the heavy weight. Let's see what happens. Oh, snap! It looks like the one strand of string was not strong enough to lift the weight. Here, we have a braid of three separate strands of the same string. Now, let's see if this cord is strong enough to lift the weight. The cord of three strands held. The single strand was not strong enough to lift the weight, but when braided together with other pieces, it was strong enough. God knows that we are stronger when we are together with other followers of Christ. That is part of the reason why God calls us to gather. If you have made Jesus the leader and forgiver of your life, then you can live and serve the way God designed you to by finding ways to gather together with other Christ followers. You can attend church services or join life groups and serving teams during the week, or you can serve other Christ followers and your community together and so much more. Don't isolate yourself and spend most of your time alone. As God's word shows us, we are better together. Now, let's see what we can do with this cord of three strands. Together.